All right, so just got home from work and I've got these struts and shocks left over from the lift kit on that 2021 of Eric's that he didn't have a use for. So we made a deal and I ended up keeping those and then I picked up some uh, front strut spacers and a diff drop kit and Spike is going to get a little attitude today because it's looking kind of wimpy and I wanted to get this part done because I think for what I'm going to do with it temporarily for now anyway we're just going to put this stuff on it have a little fun with it this summer while I keep collecting parts to do the big axles and big tires and stuff. But for now, it rides like an old Buick. The 192,000 mile shocks and struts are blown out and this thing kind of wanders and dances and washes around on the road like a big old boat. So we're gonna tighten it up with this fresh new uh, Bilstein stuff that came off of Eric's TRD off-road and those spacers and should give it a little height, make it look kind of neat, and make something fun to drive around this summer while we're collecting the stuff to do the big, big axle stuff. All right, so I've got the passenger front out and just kind of doing a quick comparison, but you can see they're the exact same length, top to bottom. However, the TRD coil is thicker and there's more of them, it's more tightly wound. So I'm um, interested to see how this handles with these a uh, little bit stiffer suspension on it. Hopefully it's, I'm sure it won't be too hard, but it should be the equivalent of putting a decent aftermarket setup on this light little regular cab four cylinder truck. So just plugging away. I uh, didn't figure I'd bore you with every single detail of of the installation process is you can look across my channel and see I've done a few of these Tacomas. So this one's going to be no different than the rest. The only major difference is I am removing the front sway bar and going to leave it off. Um, part of the reason why is because I am going to do a frame chop and eliminate this lower bracket section that sticks down below the frame in the front and try and tie a support in that will protect the radiator but not hang so low. And then um, when I go and do the solid axle swap, I didn't. I don't want this extra stuff hanging down here. So, um, but for now, we're gonna get that stuff clearanced out of the way. I wanna build a front bumper with an integrated winch mount and um, that's all kind of a part of the plan. Um, of stuff that is going to be done now and actually stay even after this thing gets solid axle swapped. So, um, so for right now, I am going to ditch that sway bar. I'm guessing a little bit stiffer suspension. Um, you probably aren't going to notice it a ton, especially in a truck so light. So, but yeah, plugging away, having fun. Also, if you are like me and pulled your suspension off of another truck, um, just some quick Google searching. Uh, but the coil springs are color coded uh, left and right. So you have um, one with like a blue and one with a green. And from what I found searching, the green marked spring is your driver's side and the blue marked spring is the passenger side. And they've actually firmed up the driver's side slightly to try and combat that typical Toyota lean that most of the Toyotas get. Um, so it is important to make sure that you get this spring on the correct side of the truck to avoid any weird handling. Okay, so interestingly enough, I have the same problem I had last time. So with the TRD um, off-road shocks and springs, or struts and springs, from Eric's 2021 Crew Cab V6 installed onto my 08 standard cab, four cylinder, both four wheel drive. The, uh, that strut spring combo plus my three inch spacer lift has actually gotten me about three and a half inches of lift. And so I was gonna just try and get away with a one inch rear block, which would have left me still a half inch nose high. 
Um, but I'm building a steel bumper for the front and a winch. I thought, you know, it'll probably even itself out. However, I'm a solid two inches different right now. And uh, so even my one inch block isn't going to make up for all that. And I highly doubt, and I really don't want to put enough weight on the front to make up for that, you know, to drop the front one whole inch. So I think I'm back to looking for some two inch blocks for the back. So there's no sense in putting on the one inchers. Uh, I'm gonna hit up, hit up the Ebays or some buddies and see if I can come up with some two inch blocks because um, this is not the height that I wanted. So it looks like I belong in Carolinas or something. Not a fan. Okay. So I made it a ways and I got to the same spot where I was only had one inch rear blocks and really needed two. So I got myself some two inch blocks and U bolts and got her bolted together. And I thought, man, I've got these method wheels with 35s just sitting here because Whitney doesn't run them on the forerunner in the winter i should probably bolt them on here and just look at it just look at it oh my gosh it looks so good however the offset isn't quite right the tire is hitting the upper control arm so i'm gonna go dig in my shed because i think i've got a pair of spacers that i could put on the front and then figure out what i need to clearance and then Maybe I just run these on it for a while because we'll just look at it. Looks so awesome. Oh, well. I'm going to go uh, see if I can find my spacers. I'll get back to you. Okay. Now we got some clearance. Added some wheel spacers in there. Yeah. Inch and a quarter wheel spacers I had. Sure. Got them all bolted up. Now we got clearance. Surprisingly, the angle of that upper control arm because of the, the lift, the tire is actually pretty even with the back tire. So I wonder if just, you know, that three inch lift is obviously drawing that the suspension as it cycles um, that control arm coming down is drawing the wheel inward and it actually sits not not too bad as far as like flush with the back wheel it's pretty close so yeah 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 now now it's a matter of trying to figure out how much meat we got to take out of here to make it work uh, i'm going to start it up and turn it so looks like cab mount chop and actually just a tiny bit of the bottom of the fender flare is gonna have to go away. But uh, again, I got other things to do. It'll be fine for moving around the yard right now. Maybe I'll get to play with it tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> 